Kristen Denny Chambers, clarinetist, composer, and founder of Clarinet Playground. This is video number 15 out of 40, going through all of the etudes in Finger Fitness Etudes Book 2, with some tips and tricks as you get started with the music. This one is for Triumph. Triumph is dedicated to Marcus Moore. A native of Fairbanks, Alaska, Marcus Moore began his clarinet studies at the age of 15. Since then, he's grown to high acclaim as a rising clarinetist. Marcus currently serves as a clarinetist with the Marine Corps Forces Pacific Band. Marcus has performed with the 581st Air Force Band, 25th Infantry Division Band, U.S. Pacific Fleet Band, Georgia Wind Symphony, Neophonia Ensemble, Atlanta Wind Project, Atlanta Chamber Collective, Sonari Winds, Complete Defeat, Sad Clown Duo, and Secondary Duo. He is also a member of Chiaro, a chamber ensemble consisting of piano, saxophone, and clarinet. Marcus is the founder and president of the Libertalia Philharmonic. Marcus is also a founding member and lead sound engineer of the Neo International Clarinetist Exposé and NICE Clarinet Ensembles. This is a group on Facebook. Marcus received his bachelor's degree in music performance from Georgia State University, where he graduated magna cum laude. As a late starter to the clarinet, Marcus has certainly triumphed over many obstacles. I first interacted with Marcus through the NICE Ensembles. In the pandemic, we recorded a lot of those and had a lot of fun, and his sound engineering work was just really incredible. And then I just learned a little bit more about him and was very inspired by his career. Let's take a look at the music. At the bottom of each page in this book, you'll find one or two practice tips. For this one, it's mainly focused on some fingering ideas, which we will go over, but it reads the fork or sliver key can be used in measures eight, some in 17 to 23, 29 to 30, and 32 to 33, but at times a flip is necessary. And when you see the M indication, that means to use the middle finger. At the top of the page, you'll see two finger drills. These are really critical. Make sure you go through them very thoughtfully and carefully because this is what is folded directly into the etude as its challenge. For the first one, we're going from F sharp to A sharp, and that involves going from first finger to the register key and the A key at the same time. So here we have to focus on moving the thumb and sliding that first finger up with really great coordination. That might take some time. And the second drill moves from just one finger down, F sharp, to all fingers down for a B natural. Uh, in this case, we'll probably be using a lot of the right side Bs. So you can have your F sharp ready. You could even have your right B key ready and down, as long as no other fingers are down to shade that F sharp. So that right hand low pinky could be planted. Then you have F sharp, B, F sharp, B, F sharp, B. For style and character, we're looking at a tarantella. Most tarantellas are nice and quick, and this one is the same idea. We want it to be driving with conviction. The biggest challenge is that it's in B major, so make sure you're practicing B major scales and studies to help you feel ready for this one. Aim for quick and light, which is definitely easier said than done in B major. Um, the main theme is bouncy with some mixed articulation. <laughs> Then later on, you'll see some long slurs with some big phrases and fun shapes. When you move on to the sweetly section, we want to lighten the tone and have a nice and gentle, smooth approach. The last two lines are pretty rambunctious and bold and there's a lot going on there, but we kind of return to that light and airy character of the beginning, but it does have some aggressive elements to it too. The rhythm in this etude is fairly simple. In the main theme, you're gonna see a lot of constant eighth notes and dotted quarter notes. And then down in that sweetly area, you'll see some quarter notes and eighth note rhythms. dig in a little bit deeper to some of these tricky areas. 
At the beginning, you really want to think ahead about your pinky choices. You're going to be flipping in some places. You're going to be using the side key in some places. So if we look at this very first two measures, we're going to start on the right side for our Bs. And then we have B, F sharp, A sharp, B, F sharp, A sharp, B, A sharp, B. Then we land on that left C sharp. I think that's wise because in measure two, you're going to need to play a D sharp. Now, unless you have the alternate key on this side, all your D sharps are going to be on the right side. So we need to allow for that and think about that in advance. So when we look at measure two, then we're going to be on that left C sharp, and then we're going to go to our thumb for E sharp because that's the same as F natural. And then we're actually going to need to flip flop. So you're going to go from F to F sharp or E sharp to F sharp because then we need to go to a C sharp again. And if we're on the side key and then we try to go to a, a, a note across the break, that can get really clumsy. So I think flipping in measure two is a smarter choice. Once you get to measure four, you can play your C sharps on either the right or the left side. At, at that point, you can decide what works best for you. Just before the breath mark, I would play your F sharp in the top finger, take your breath, go to your thumb for E sharp, and then in this spot, you can play your side key after the E sharp. So E sharp is your thumb and then bottom two side keys for F sharp and then G sharp, A sharp, B on the right. Down in the Sweetly section, you'll have some fork fingerings for F sharp, sometimes middle. And then we also have lots of double sharps and things like E sharp. So we really wanna make sure we know where we're headed and think ahead about what our fingers are doing there. Let's take a look at measure 17. So here we have G sharp, let go of that side key for F double sharp because that's the same as G natural. Back to G sharp, B, G sharp, and then fork. The K means the fork symbol. So we go to that fork F sharp and then let go of the fork and we're playing E sharp, which is the same as F, back to the fork, then up for B. And then we need to be on middle finger for the last note for F sharp because the note that follows is an E natural. And the last thing we wanna do is try to go from a fork down to an E natural. That's a little bit more clumsy. At measure 17, we get that sweetly theme again, but now it's a little bit more decorated. So the fingering choices are gonna be slightly different. So at measure 21, we have the G sharp, F double sharp again, G sharp, B, A sharp, G sharp, fork for your F sharp, let go for E sharp, back to fork, up to B, G sharp, and then middle again, for the final F sharp because the note that's right after that again is E natural. Of course, right after 21, we go down to 22, which is the example just below here. And we start on that E natural. So then we're here and we're gonna play all F sharps in measure 22 with the middle finger. So E, F sharp, A sharp, G sharp, middle F sharp, E, D sharp, let go of the pinky for C double sharp, it's the same as a D natural, back to the pinky for D sharp, and middle to end that measure. Measure 23 is very similar to 21. G sharp, let go, G sharp, B, A sharp, G sharp, fork here for F sharp, let go for E sharp, back to fork, B, G sharp, and then here on this F sharp, you can do fork again if you want, but the note right after that is a G sharp. So I tend to do middle there because if I'm on fork, I might be tempted to let go of that like I've been doing before in the pattern. So I play that last one middle because then I go G sharp, let go for F double sharp because it's the same as a G natural, and then A sharp, and then G double sharp, which is the same as an A natural. So you're just playing that side key, let go, add it back, B, take your breath, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, land on the right side B for the main theme coming back. So when I think about the double sharps in measure 24, I just think about G sharp, let go, G sharp, 
A sharp, let go, A sharp. And that really helps my brain make sense of that. Finally, we'll take a look at those last two lines. In my opinion, this is where it's the most tricky. I get the most tangled here, or I'll get here and I'll crash and burn. So spend some time with these last two lines, maybe even at the beginning of your practice, so that you feel really confident when you get down to that section of the music. So let's take a look. Here at 28, we have a remaining of the main theme leading into this little coda section. So we have A sharp, C sharp, A sharp, G sharp, C sharp, G sharp, F sharp. And then we have E sharp down low. And that's the same thing as an F natural. So we were here for that note, all fingers, and then this pinky key. And then we have F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, you gotta remember that, A sharp. And then we're gonna flip flop to the middle finger. So we have middle finger F, uh, B, then F sharp, first finger for A sharp, middle finger again here. And the reason we have to go middle is because if we go fork, we're gonna end up with a tangle. But the fork comes later, so beat two, middle, F sharp first. Now we get to go fork, A sharp, fork, C sharp. The next measure is the same, it's just quiet. So we have B, F sharp first, flip, F sharp first, fork, first, fork, C sharp. Then down at 31, I go back to my right side, B, B, F sharp, A sharp, B, F sharp, A sharp, middle F sharp, and then go down the scale as you would with any B major scale pattern. And then we have B, F sharp, D sharp, C sharp, F sharp, C sharp, B. Now on this first B, if you want, you can do the fork early. I like to do the fork early, it helps me but the fork didn't really have to be marked until the second one. And so some of my editors were like, ah, you really should put it on that second one. But I, I start the fork early. So let's go back to 32. B, F sharp, D sharp on the right side, C sharp, F sharp, C sharp. I play fork here, F sharp, fork again, first finger, F sharp, first finger, G sharp, F sharp, G sharp. Then out to the left for F sharp, right for G sharp, first finger for A sharp, and for this B you can do fork, and then you go F sharp front finger and chromatic up to the B. So F sharp G, G sharp A, A sharp B, you can do B with both, or you could do B right side, and then the low B to finish it out. There is a lot going on here, you're gonna to wanna to spend some time and be very patient. for some final thoughts on this etude. Simply put, this one is a bear. It's tough. Work on your B major scales and studies before, during, after, that will all help. So no matter the level of the player, a challenge will be found in this one. Be patient, make fingering choices in advance, and work on those areas very slowly. Piece it together in small chunks and make transitions comfortable by playing like the last measure of one section and the first measure of the next section so you can kind of connect those together. Oh yeah, and then make it light and quick and sound like an easy tarantella. Good luck. To listen to a beautiful recording of this etude and all other etudes from this book, head over to my website, clarinetplayground.com. Trevor Stewart has recorded all 40 etudes beautifully, and they are available for purchase there on my website. Feel free to join us in the Clarinet Playground group on Facebook where we play and post for each other. And head over to my website at clarinetplayground.com for more fun music and books. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Forces Pacific Band 